So as usual, Netflix is adding a ton of stuff on the first of the year, including a new heist series where you can apparently watch the episodes in any order you want, and what I consider to be the greatest and most overlooked action movie of the 21st century so far. First, we're gonna talk about all the stuff they add on January 1st, which is most of the movies you're gonna be familiar with. Then we'll talk about all the new releases coming through the rest of the month. And finally, I'll tell you about everything leaving Netflix in January, so you can be sure to catch those titles before they're gone. But on January 1st, they're adding a ton of stuff, including Reservoir Dogs. This is Quentin Tarantino's first movie, or at least the first one that he directed. Still a hit movie. Not my personal favorite of his, but I do know there are a lot of people who this is their absolute favorite Tarantino movie. They're also going to be adding Minority Report, which I think is one of the best sci-fi movies Steven Spielberg has directed this century. He has some great sci-fi movies in his filmography, but Minority Report still stands out and I will definitely be watching it on Netflix. If that's not enough Tom Cruise for you, they're also adding Top Gun. While the original is not nearly as good as the sequel that just came out this past year, it is a pretty excellent 80s movie, even if it is cheesy at times. If you got the itch to watch it after seeing Maverick this summer, then now is your chance on Netflix. If that's not for you though, you might enjoy The Aviator, which is an excellent Martin Scorsese movie starring Leonardo DiCaprio as Howard Hughes. If you never saw this gym, it is epic, it is long, but it is beautifully shot. There are some amazing color schemes in this movie that were all done digitally, and they look absolutely incredible. Obviously DiCaprio and the rest of the cast do a killer job. Scorsese kills it. Even if you're not the least bit interested in the life of Howard Hughes, if you have any sort of affinity for this time period, the Aviator is a must watch. Another movie in a similar time period is Peter Jackson's King Kong. I do know why people don't love this movie. It does have some silly stuff in it, but it is a big epic over the top King Kong movie with some beautiful sequences in it that are yes, all animated, but they do look incredible and there are a bunch of fantastic moments in this, even if Peter Jackson did kind of blow it multiple times. Speaking of blowing it, they're adding Rocky V. <laughs> and Rocky 1 through 4, which are all excellent movies. You could skip the fifth one, but Rocky 1 through 4 does make an incredible block of movies to watch this month. Road to Perdition has turned into a classic gangster movie starring Tom Hanks. Not only is he a total badass in this movie, which is kind of rare, but you've also got one of the last great performances from Paul Newman, kind of an early role from Daniel Craig that is excellent in this movie. Jude Law is an absolute monster, and this is directed by Sam Mendes, and it looks absolutely beautiful. But if those movies don't have enough sex in them for you, they're gonna be adding Closer. This was based on a play by the same name and has an all-star cast with Julia Roberts, Natalie Portman, Clive Owen, and Jude Law again. This is sort of a soap opera-y, backstabby sex drama. There's actually not a lot of sex on screen in it. It's mostly discussed, but it can be quite graphic at times, and this is very well acted. But it is a very talky movie. That's about all that happens. If you like any of the actors here though, this is a pretty excellent performance piece. But if you want some graphic sex in your movies, they are gonna be adding Brokeback Mountain this month. But if you need some laughs, they're gonna be adding Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, one of the most visually stunning movies I think ever made. Even if you're not partial to the visual style of Edgar Wright, this movie is a banger and has some wild moments in it that are totally fun, and again, just visually, it looks unlike anything else ever put to screen. If that's not enough laughs, they're also gonna be adding Daddy Daycare, Fletch, Forrest Gump, Grease, Jerry Maguire, The Nutty Professor, The Nutty Professor 2, The Clumps, and my personal selection in the comedy category, Twins. That's what I call fun. Did you see me with the two wheels? In the horror category, they're gonna be adding The Conjuring, one of the better big budget horror movies to have come out in the last 10 years or so. I Know What You Did Last Summer, one of the better big budget horror movies from the 90s, and Life, a big budget horror movie that some people like, some people don't. If you don't mind a small CGI monster, then this is actually a pretty wild ride. But my top pick in the horror category goes to The Burbs. Which also could have been a top pick in the comedy category. Now the big thing that they're adding on January 1st is Kaleidoscope. It is a new heist series with a pretty killer cast, but the interesting thing about Kaleidoscope is supposedly you can watch the episodes in any order you want. 
Now, this is a gimmick. It's essentially designed to get people to talk about what order they watched it in, but it does sound interesting, and even without that gimmick, the show does look like a pretty killer heist series. But my top pick for everything getting added on the 1st, again, this is just January 1st, is The Raid 2. Now, if you're familiar with The Raid, I think the sequel is one of the best sequels ever made. But even if you're not familiar with The Raid Redemption, you can watch The Raid 2. It was actually written first and designed to be its own standalone movie. This is an action martial arts gangster movie from Indonesia that features some of the wildest, most over-the-top, raw, visceral action you're going to see in any movie anywhere. There are countless fight scenes in this movie that go on longer than almost anything you've ever seen, and they are actually hitting each other. Not in every single shot, but some people got really hurt making this movie because they're really throwing punches, and it's pretty violent but it's expertly directed, beautifully shot, and just kind of an incredible movie. It's very likely it's not gonna be dubbed on Netflix, but it is well worth reading the subtitles for this thing, trust me. And if you don't do subtitles, they're adding a couple of Transformers movies as well. On January 4th, they're adding a new Netflix original movie called How I Became a Gangster. This is actually a gangster movie from Poland. I've seen several crime movies from Poland that I've absolutely loved. One being another Netflix original titled Furiosa, so I will definitely be checking this one out. On the 5th, they're adding a movie for dog lovers called Dog Gone. This is about a lost lab in the Appalachian Mountains where Rob Lowe plays a father helping his son try to find their lost dog. Again, if you absolutely love dogs and watch every movie about dogs, this will probably be a pretty good watch for you. And then on the 6th, they're adding one of my more anticipated Netflix originals of the year, the Pale Blue Eye. Now that cadet is missing. Oh, I need you to discreetly infiltrate the cadets. What is this? Blood, symbols, rituals. Oh my lord. This is a period piece starring Christian Bale where he actually plays a detective investigating a murder and he enlists the help of a young man who the world would later come to know as Edgar Allan Poe. And this is directed by Scott Cooper, who did Out of the Furnace and Hostels, both starring Christian Bale. He also did Black Mass with Johnny Depp, Crazy Heart, and more recently, Antlers. But The Pale Blue Eye does look like a pretty fascinating murder mystery. So mark your calendars for the 6th. Also on the 6th, they're adding the 11th season of The Walking Dead, if you're still watching that series. On the 10th, Andrew Santino has a new comedy special called Cheeseburger coming to Netflix. He is one of my favorites. Maybe not my top, but he is really funny, so I'll definitely be checking this one out in mid-January. And then also on the 10th, even though the title does sound funny, this is a pretty grisly docu-series called The Hatchet-Wielding Hitchhiker. If you remember this crazy fella from this viral video, this docu-series is actually going to dive deeper into what actually happened with this guy who definitely committed some sort of murder. And then on the 12th, they're bringing back Vikings Valhalla for season two. This is a spin-off series of the Netflix original series Vikings, which means if you have not discovered it yet, there is a ton of Vikings content you could be watching between now and when season two drops. And then on the 13th, Sky Rojo returns for another season. This is a wild, over-the-top action crime series about strippers in Spain, and it is incredible stuff and the episodes are only 30 minutes and they pack a lot of story and action into them this has a very unique visual style and is actually created by the same people behind money heist so if you enjoyed money heist definitely check out the first couple of seasons of sky rojo it is wild stuff on the 19th they add a interesting looking documentary called the pez outlaw it's about someone who was collecting and maybe even smuggling rare Pez dispensers. This is actually from the same team behind The Legend of Cocaine Island, which you can also watch on Netflix right now. That was a crime docu-series that was actually done in a really fun, vibrant way. So I'm excited to see what they did with this Pez documentary as well. On the 23rd, they add Minions The Rise of Gru. This is the latest in the Minions Gru series and it is every bit as good as any of the other Despicable Me movies. Narvik is a World War II Netflix original movie from Norway that looks incredibly interesting. It revolves around a mine that was used to build most 
of the heavy machinery for the Nazis and was already released in Norway and has pretty high reviews, especially for something that's labeled as a Netflix original. And then on the 27th, they add one of the bigger movies of the month, or at least one of the bigger projects you can tell they're definitely proud of. It's titled You People, and it stars Jonah Hill and Eddie Murphy. Ain't this about a bitch. Where's our waiter? I am starving. Now they haven't released a lot of footage. It's mostly of this one dinner scene, but it looks quite funny. Jonah Hill is trying to marry Eddie Murphy's daughter. It looks kind of like a guess who's coming to dinner setup, but with legends like Jonah Hill and Eddie Murphy doing the banter here, hopefully this is solid stuff. And then another big project for the month is Lockwood and Company. This is a new Netflix original series from the UK that's based on a popular book series and it features the supernatural, ghosts, samurai swords. Looks like it should be a pretty fun ride and they're saving it for the end of the month, which often means it's a gem. But speaking of the end of the month, here is everything leaving Netflix this month. If you're new to the channel, welcome, but the date listed is the date it is gone, not the last date you can watch it. So if you want to watch any of these titles, make sure you watch it before the date listed. I've gone ahead and marked a few titles in bold. These are all ones that I've strongly recommended in prior videos. Speaking of prior videos, definitely click the like button, the subscribe button, and go check out some of my more recent videos if you want more movie recommendations across all the major streaming services, including the free ones. But I will keep making these videos as long as you keep watching them. Thanks for checking out this special Netflix episode, and you will see me on the next one.